and they can spread it. So everyone learns more and more about it so we can save the planet. Um, so in this group, we welcome everyone to share their experiences um, with climate change or anything. Uh, we welcome them to share their feelings um, and their knowledge for everyone's self-expression and for others to benefit from. Um, so we've had, um, oh no, this is our second event for the public um, on Zoom. And, but we have weekly meetings um, where we talk about our ideas and things going on currently in the world um, revolving around climate change or the planet. Um, and we hope to have many, many more public events to spread any spread the community connection. Um, one of our current projects is we're creating a mural. So we are working on our ideas. We're working with a, another artist who is a part of a sub, she's not in this group, um, but she's joined us. And we are, um, the mural is gonna like reflect the climate change and like hopeful and like destruction. And we'll show you, you can check out our, I'll send the, um, our website. We're gonna hopefully have that coming soon. Um, so, I hope you guys got a little bit of an intro to what our internship group is. And without further ado, I'm gonna talk about our first little breakout room that we're gonna do. Um, so our first breakout room, let's see, we're gonna go, so there's gonna be about three or four people per room. Um, and so basically this is the main room and then you're gonna click away and go to a separate room with random people. Um, and so the thing that you're gonna talk about if you're comfortable while you're in that room is there are three things. Um, one, just say how you're feeling in the moment and um, what brought you here to this gathering or this uh, forum, you may call it. Um, and a place in the nature or in the planet that you, cherish or love or love to go to or love to look at um, just say one of those and then before we go into those shortly we're gonna I'm gonna say some things about the breakout room so some guidelines we want everyone to feel safe in what they're saying so if you can um, keep everything confidential after the meeting and um listen intently without distraction that would be wonderful and so let's see the breakout rooms oh yeah so we're it's going to show up join breakout room i think and if you're oh yeah okay so and the prompt for the breakout room is in the chat if you forget what to talk about and if you're uncomfortable you can come back to the main room and this is just a little short connection for four minutes, just connecting with the people in your breakout room. Thank is it all set, Alexa? Thank you, Willow. Okay. Yeah. I'm just doing a little shuffling to get our interns in different rooms and then I'll open those up here in just a second. All right. Well done, Willow. Okay, I am opening all rooms.
What? <laughs> it didn't happen. Why are we the only ones in here? Because <laughs> we were good people and we returned and we were supposed to. I guess. <laughs> Hey, buddy. All right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, basically what climate anxiety is. And also, I'm going to be sharing a personal experience of how climate anxiety has affected me. I mean, the, the definition of climate anxiety is a psychological response to climate change, but that encompasses so many different things. Fear, anger, disappointment, confusion, uh, disconnect, uh, disconnection, you know, it's, it's really everything. And while it does affect everyone in some sort of way, uh, it especially affects young people as 60% uh, of young people, I believe between the age of 18 and 24 in the United States feel fear about uh, the <laughs> problems of, uh, of climate change, and 40% feel hopeless about these same, same problems. And I, my personal experience with climate change has been noticing exactly feeling, feeling, feeling guilty about the fact that the home that I have right now and the home that I, I've been living here for 10 years won't be the same home in 20 years, you know, I almost feeling homesick in my own home, even though I, I, I live here, it feels like it's slowly changing. And in some, in a lot of ways it is changing. And those feelings, you know, they're real. And it's really just, it's, it's a normal thing to feel these things, you know? And it, yeah, that's basically what I want to say. Mm -hmm. And I hope you all say talk about your feelings as well you know because that's that's really what this is all about so for me uh, my climate anxiety manifested in a bit of a different way than buddies did and i would say i first started becoming concerned about the environment and climate change uh, in elementary school but it definitely escalated in middle school and that was around the time that the then governor of California declared that we were in a state of emergency because of drought. And also when I became aware of the increasingly uh, larger wildfires that are now normal for us all. And it really uh, had a big impact on my life. And I kind of reached a breaking point when I read a report uh, from a bunch of scientists that was like their prediction for the next 50 years of what was going to be happening on the planet in terms of effects of climate change. And as a young person, as like a 12 year old, it was really alarming to read a report like that and see stuff like acid rain and days where it would be too hot to go outside. And after reading that, I had a bit of a like breakdown, I would call it. And um, it was not a fun experience and I didn't want to ever have to feel that way again. So how I've dealt with my climate anxiety is kind of by detaching my like feelings and emotions about my future and my worries about it from actually learning like taking action and learning about climate change which is probably not the most healthy way to deal with it but that's what I had to do to be able to uh, move forward effectively and it's a genuine response and um, a lot of people have a lot of different reactions to climate anxiety and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Thank you. Um, yeah, so just like Julia said, um, we're going to be going into that section of this um, gathering. So for our next breakout room, we're going to, the people in this um, group right here are, you're all going to, um, if you're comfortable, share your experience with climate anxiety. So one of the prompts for this breakout room is what is your experience with climate anxiety? So 
um, I hope that those two experiences kind of got you thinking about yours because um, this next part, you're gonna have two minutes for the first prompt that I just said. And then now Julia is gonna say um, what the second prompt will be in the same breakout room. So our second prompt is going to be, or we'd like you to go around and share actions you've taken in the past, are taking now, or would like to take in the future regarding the environment or climate change. Um, because indulging and thinking about big problems that are out of our immediate reach can be super compulsive and frustrating and scary, but uh, taking actions that you can take and that are accessible to you and hearing about other people's actions and ideas can be inspiring and um, help sustain motivation in the long term, which we're definitely going to need in regards to climate change. And yeah, so our second prompt, I kind of just mentioned it, but it's what actions related to climate change are you taking now, uh, took in the past, or would like to take in the future? And those two are going to be in the chat. Um, we'll each have two minutes to share on each of those prompts. And Willow mentioned guidelines before, but We'd like you, we have a couple guidelines that we'd like you to follow when we go around. Uh, number one is empathetic listening. Number two is confidentiality for personal stories. And number three is no interrupting or giving advice because this is just a, just a time for us to share and listen to each other. And so, yeah, you can now join your breakout rooms. Uh, we're the first ones back, of course. Uh -huh. Surprise. <laughs> so, Bridget, you were you were talking about um, sun sunrise in Lagunitas, right? So, what what kind of um, you know is how many people are involved and what kind of what kind of stuff are you you working on? I'm not here. Maybe I'm not sure if you're muted. Can you hear me better now? There you go. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Okay. So um well we did a march a little while ago in Fairfax, which is really good social distancing and um that was a little while ago. Now we, well, there's like about 10 people that show up every, like every time, but then there, there's probably more than that. It's just, you know, with like how many people showing up and being able to be there. And then um, we're right now, we're working on getting um, com like restaurants and stuff to stop using plastic materials more. And we're writing letters to the companies. And then, um, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. That's great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good to hear. Peg, you can do some photos of our local sunrise leaders. Yeah, that was, I would love to find out when they're when they are uh, doing some actions. Yeah, maybe you can get on the list. Yeah. Maybe I have a, uh, do you want to like know who's in charge or anything or um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was wondering. Sure. So um, it's Ella Clark and oh, I don't know her last name. Um, I don't know her last name, sorry. And then there's, um, that's the person that I know their last name. There's Victoria and there's um, the other person. But if you get in there, they, um, they're at the Loganina School District. They, okay. um, is there an email address? Oh, I can I can give you her email. I don't know if she. Yeah, I can give it to you. I think. Oh, 
Well, for... might, is there an email address just for Sunrise, for Lagunita Sunrise? No. Oh, there is, I think. Wait, yeah, hang on. I'll, I'll find it. I need to find it. Sorry. It's in my... okay. <laughs> it's okay. Is this kind of being organized by the school or is it a separate? Um, it's um, part, it's some of the kids who in the school who are doing yeah. it. Okay. I just sent that to you in the chat. Oh, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It didn't come up into my chat yet. Oh, sorry. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. I think it's there it is. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, Ella's real name is Ursula Clark, but she was by Ella. So Ursula is, yeah. Ursula? Okay. Yeah. Got it. So I kind of came in, I came in on this call right before the breakout rooms I was running late. And um, so could someone explain to me more about the, the internships? Yeah, so basically we are an internship, we're called Green Stitch and we're just working with, um, we have a, a few different projects going on right now. Um, um, we've had, I think this is our second public event um, and we're working on a mural and putting up signs around the valley um, and other ways just to like spread inspiration and connection with the community around climate change. And it's also for our benefit for education and learning more about it. Um, oh. So those are kind of the things we're working on and yeah. Oh, that's great. So is this a, um, is this a broader organization than just in the valley here then or? Yeah. We actually, this is just the um, San Geronimo Valley Community Center Next Gen um, yeah. internship. Yeah, so and okay. Green Stitch is actually, it was just um, very newly formed. Like we just decided on our name just a few weeks ago. So oh, cool. we're just starting up. Yeah. It's yeah. a great name. Who came up I with know, it? It is. So cool. it is. Yeah, someone in our group came up with it and we thought it was a really nice because it was kind of stitching, this kind of <laughs> healing, putting the earth back together with yeah. green Very nice yeah really good also is there anything uh, i also came in like is there anything like important that i messed at all or um no mostly just introducing and then um i think just talking about our climate anxiety and what the basics of that i don't know if you were there for that but um just 
kind of what this whole um, event is going to be about just um, being able to share out your own anxiety and find ways to cope with it and um, strategize how to just understand it more. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. In a way, I feel like I don't want to totally get rid of my anxiety about it because it's like a, the anxiety is like a message that something's wrong and I don't want to uh, just think, oh, it's no big deal. I feel like too many people, maybe more people should feel anxious or something. So it's not like I totally want to get rid of the anxiety. I, I have to embrace some of it. Right. Yeah. It's kind of finding that balance of having the anxiety to like move you to action, but not to make you so hopeless that you don't do right. anything. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's a it's good a really way good way to it. look at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Aileen. This moment of quiet is helpful for anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Peter? Hey, Bob. Doing good. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peg. Hi, Eileen. Hey, Alexa. Hey, hey Alexa. Hi. Hi, Bridget. Bob, are you guys in LA? I, I'm in Corte Madera and Annie's in LA. I'm taking care of my 94-year-old mom and she's taking care of her 95-year-old dad this week. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, not here. Annie and... Annie's dad and your mom, okay. Not, I, not your, your mom's your mom, 95 year Your mom's dad. dad wasn't one year older. <laughs> Annie's dad. My mom, Annie's dad. We're grammar <laughs> sticklers, if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just closed the room, so everyone should be back here within 45 seconds. Magic. in the room, breakout rooms. Great. Great. Welcome back, everybody. As soon as everybody gets back, um, we're going to have a little stretch led by Ben. So, yeah. We're all popping back in. All right. How's it going for people so far? Yeah. Give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Enjoyed your rooms. Good. Nice. Oh, hi, Corey. <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, we got Ben. Yeah. So I am going to be leading a small stretch. So um, it's kind of just going to be a little break and also maybe a, an introduction to a stress relieving activity. Okay, so we're going to start by reaching our hands up to the sky, to the stars bright out tonight, opening our chests, breathing in and out. And 
and we're gonna reach all the way to the ground, arching your back, getting all the kinks out, reaching all the way down, focusing your energy to the floor. You can also just move around a little bit to stretch out what needs stretching. And then we're going to go up and you're going to roll your shoulders back in big circular motions. And then forward, nice wave music. <laughs> ah. Reach your hands up to the sky again, and we're gonna tilt sideways to the left. like a crescent moon. We're gonna bring ourselves up, go to the other side. Just relax into it. <laughs> and we're going down. Okay, that was a little taste of some stretching. I hope that was calming. We're going to go Hello. to Sam and Ane for the next part of this meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. So next we have two questions that we're going to discuss in breakout rooms. Um, so it seems like our society is addicted to spreading fear and we're constantly bombarded with bad news, which makes us feel helpless and as though taking action is pointless. Um, and so a good way to spread hope and relieve some of the anxiety that we've been talking about tonight is to learn about solutions and good news concerning the climate. So in breakout rooms, we're going to each share some good news that we've heard recently about the climate. Um, and sometimes it can be challenging to think of good news just because we're so used to all the bad news. So you can share any type of good news. It can be big or small. And hopefully this exercise will remind us that um, humans created climate change and so humans can also solve it. So for example, um, a big piece of good news that I've heard recently is that the European Union is rejecting a trade deal with Brazil unless the Amazon is protected, which will hmm. hopefully put pressure on Brazil to protect the rainforest. Wow. Um, and then a small piece of good news in my life is I go to Marin Catholic High School and I'm in the bee club there and the bees are just doing really well and we're hoping to split the hive soon. Um, and then Sam has the second question for the same breakout room. So for our second prompt um, going around in the breakout room, we're going to think a little bit about our future. I know for me personally, when I think about climate action and climate change and the planet, I sometimes can feel a little bit frustrated or guilty that the way that our lifestyles are and the way that we all have to live in the society is often leading to harming our planet and causing pollution. And so I think it's really easy for us to think about what we don't want in our future. And that can also cause a lot of anxiousness and stress um, and so in this next breakout room, we're going to instead focus on what we are hoping and what our visions are and what we want to fight for to have in our future um, related to the planet, the really, our relationships with the planet and our relationships with each other. So for an example of this, one of my visions for the future related to the planet is that all of the leaders and corporations and people in power on our planet are just as focused and on board with creating climate stability and a healthy planet and are just as passionate about climate action as we are. 
So with that being said, we're all gonna go back into our breakout rooms. This ones are gonna be a little bit shorter, just eight minutes. Um, and then we'll see you back here. It's just us. <laughs> And I'll share another hopeful thing since we're here, but one thing that I um, I also see is that climate um, climate is becoming such a, an environmental education is becoming a big part of the public school system or like this is an avenue that they're teaching now and really talking about it and encouraging that activism. So I think that, you know, we're just raising a generation of really conscious people who, are hopefully going to be doing things a lot different. So that's definitely hopeful. My children certainly are doing things differently from how my generation did. They don't, they don't aspire to own anywhere near as much. And um, neither one of them has a car. Well, my daughter does now, but she lived for years and years without a car. So lots of biking and anyway, bless their hearts. <laughs> whenever we lived we lived three times in Germany we never had a car there so I was kind of an activist when we started building the smart train I, I just I went way out of my way to make sure that, that was going to happen yeah I think that that is a challenge with Marin is the public transportation is and especially in the valley like you have to drive to get places you know it's it's a big um it's a big barrier i'd like to see a um i'd like to see an e-bike fleet that is like parked at the community center or the church or somewhere where people can rent and use e-bikes to get places but it would have to be linking to the net other communities really to be able to make it work yeah there are some pretty astounding regular bikers. Um, I know uh, Emma Louise had an e-bike for a while. When I, when I sit there for the honor pantry, when people are driving through to get their food, there are a lot of people who are walking in on bikes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think in the Valley, people are doing that. Yeah. Alexa. Yes. <laughs> okay, I think we have Ben again. Yeah. Okay. If you want to have and just a note for everybody, if you go onto speaker view, if you're not seeing Ben highlighted that will happen. Okay, so, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, so I'm going to share some of the things that I found really useful in um, curbing my climate anxiety and de-stressifying my life. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I've found uh, really helpful are books, uh, maybe from the library to reduce the production costs and that stuff. Anyways, 
that's a whole different tangent. <laughs> um, yeah, books are really helpful for collating and um, finding new ideas and solutions to climate change and everything related to it. Project Drawdown is a really great example of this. Um, it has like a hundred different solutions to reverse global warming. Some other books that we found um, and we're really interested in are How to Avoid a Climate Disaster and All We Can Save, Truth, Courage, and Solutions for the Climate Crisis. Another thing that I do is I look for inspiring people to um, motivate me to do more good for the climate. Uh, some people that motivate me personally are Greta Thunberg uh, activist, James Hansen, who is a climate scientist, a leading climate scientist, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is a representative uh, in the House and one of the leaders of the Green New Deal. Another thing that I do is I go to a lot of meetings, uh, which is in part with all of the friends and people who support me. They're all in this meeting and event uh, community. Uh, yeah, pertaining uh, climate change. So some of the groups that do these meetings are Green Stitch, our group, uh, 350 Bay Area, sun, Sunrise, and then also Fibershed. Another thing that I do is to de-stressify. Uh, I go on a lot of walks and hikes and just physical activity is a really good thing to do. If you're really feeling stressed out, it's really nice to have a walk out in nature because also it kind of gives you a great perspective on what we're trying to save by doing this. Now, um, as this is a sharing group, we want to know all of the different ways that you guys um, calm down and de-stressify pertaining climate change and climate anxiety. So if you recommend anything, any resources that help you, please put them in the chat. Um, and we can just read all about everybody's different experiences um, about that. So now, because we're getting close, we're biting the end right now, um, I'm gonna pass it to Sam. So we're just kind of gonna, near the end of this meeting, I'm gonna read a little <clears throat> writing by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. And this is just some excerpts from one of her writing that I thought really stood out to me and it really pertained to what we're speaking about tonight. In any dark time, there is a tendency to veer toward fainting over how much is wrong or unmended in the world. Do not focus on that. There is a tendency to fall into being weakened by dwelling on what is outside your reach, by what cannot yet be. Do not focus there. That is spending the wind without raising the sails. We are needed, that is all we can know. And though we meet resistance, we more so will meet great souls who will hail us, love us, and guide us, and we will know them when they appear. Ours is not the task of fixing the entire world at once but of stretching out to mend the part of the world that is within our reach. Any small calm thing that one soul can do to help another soul, to assist some portion of this poor suffering world will help immensely. It is not given to us to know which acts or by whom will cause the critical mass to tip toward an enduring good. What is needed for dramatic change is an accumulation of acts, adding, adding to, adding more, continuing. We know that it does not take everyone on earth to bring justice and peace, 
but only a small determined group who will not give up during the first, second, or hundredth gale. There will always be times when you feel discouraged. I too have felt despair many times in my life, but I do not keep a chair for it. I will not entertain it. It is not allowed to eat from my plate. In that spirit, I hope you will write this on your wall. When a great ship is in harbor and moored, it is safe. There can be no doubt. But that is not what great ships are built for. Thank you. Uh -huh. Again, that was by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. Uh, thank you so much, Sam. So we are at the end of our evening and I wanted to just ask from a few people that participated in the evening tonight, just to say an appreciation of our awesome presenters. Um, so if you would like to just um, either raise the virtual hand or just unmute, if you have a, an appreciation of the group, we'll just be able to have time for a, a couple of them. Um, and then we will just do a little bit of um, announcements at the very end and and call it a night. So um, I don't know if Alexa, you can see if anybody has their hand raised or somebody's willing to shout out an appreciation. We, they were all excellent presentations from the interns and um, the prompts and, and uh, the time allotted and everything was really good. I found it very meaningful, every single breakout room and uh, each presentation. I wanna really thank, uh, Corey and, and the interns for, for this hour. Great, thank you, Peter. I see that Dave Court also has his virtual hand up. I just wanna thank everyone. I was, learned so much tonight and there was just so much incredible food for thought and um, really, really appreciate it. And thank you for bringing this group of people together. I'm getting to see some people in the gallery who I just know and love so much and haven't seen him in a long time. So thank you for um, just bringing us together here. Uh, it's a kind of a strange way to get together, but it, it, this is what we got and we'll, we're just gonna wrap our arms around it. So thank you. Thank you, Dave. Lucy and Christian. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really, really appreciate all of the interns for being so open and inspiring and for sharing your stories, um, specifically Buddy and Julia's um, experiences with eco-anxiety and the hopes y'all shared. Um, I was really inspired, so thank you. Thank you, Lucy. and. I'll just say a quick uh, thank you to, to everybody that presented tonight. And I just feel like these things, healing is already happening. So thank you for spreading the love and, and, and creating a format where healing is happening. So thank you. So I think I'll turn it over to Alexa. Yeah, thanks everyone for being here tonight. I just wanted to um, talk about a couple things real quick. This is one of many virtual programs that the San Geronimo Valley Community Center is offering right now. And our next, our most pressing next one is this Sunday. We have a Coast Miwok um, community discussion with some Coast Miwok leaders from the area. So I'm gonna paste that link into the chat and I encourage you to check that one out. And then if you visit our website, which this link will take you there, you can also explore a bunch of other things that are coming up. We have monthly art salons and an artist film night and Kate's Cafe open mic nights that are all managed to exist on Zoom. And so, um, and those events aren't fun or aren't great unless people like you show up and join us. So I hope that you'll, you'll check out what we've got going on. I also at all of these events, I always just wanna give everyone an opportunity um, to consider supporting the community center and programs like this and other programs. So I'll put a link to our donation page in the chat. Um, and if you feel compelled and excited by this work, please consider supporting. 
And um, with that, I just want to say a huge thank you to all the next gen interns and to Corey for her leadership on this. Um, I said, share this in one of my groups, but ever since Corey and I really talked about and started this next gen program, she's been saying to me like, climate, 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 we've got to do it. We've got to make this a part of it. And I'm so incredibly proud of the work that's been done here and this group that's come together. And I just want to express huge thank you and gratitude to all of you. Um, so have a great evening, everybody. Oh, wait, I think Ben wanted, we wanted to take a picture, right? Oh yeah, Ben, thank you. Oh yeah, that. so we want to take a group picture, one of those Zoom like window full screen picture things. So if you don't want to be in the picture, just um, stop your video and uh, Alexa will hide you from the picture. Um, yeah. And for the picture, you should probably do something fun and exciting in your window so I can really see you. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't know here. Huh. I got it. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good, night. So good, to see good you. work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you. Save the Bye. world. Save the world. Yay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye Annie. Hey, Peter.